Hi everybody, it's Terry with Early Girls Yarn and I am here with the awesome, wonderful, fabulous friend, Emily. Hi, Emily with Calm Collection. Um, you can find me at Calm Collection on Instagram, K-A-L-M, same thing on Facebook. And I think I even have a Pinterest. You're that cool. I don't know how old it is, but <laughs> it's there. I do not have a Pinterest. <laughs> um, you can find me and actually, I just changed my Ravelry name to match everything else. So I am Early Girls Yarn. E-A-R-L-E-Y on Instagram, Ravelry, and here on YouTube. So welcome. Thank you so much for everybody that's coming back. And what do you think about the giveaway and all the people that supported? Wow, it was great. I mean, I had tons of new followers, a, a lot of new comments, and it was great. It was fun. It was a lot and of fun And a lot of bags do. got shipped all around. Yes. Holy moly. Thank Bags you guys so much. Yeah, I did not know it was going to be so big and I was getting orders left and right. And I think we need to come up with a bag, a special Calm Collection bag hashtag. That's a good idea. For bags in the wild. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Okay. That sounds like a lot of fun. She's got a lot of good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm something. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was, I'm just so grateful for everybody yes. that um, came on, that commented <clears throat> on the podcast that commented on the Instagram and they were just so encouraging. Thank you so much. It's yeah. so fun to connect with different people all over that have this passion for making things, which is what we both have too. I agree. It was it's fun. It was fun for me too because the fiber world is new to me, you know, and everybody that commented and everybody that I talked to on Etsy were just so kind and I've gotten so many great reviews already on the purchases on Etsy. Ooh, so that's a good idea. See, I'm a slacker because I'm inside connection. So <laughs> I don't order through Etsy. So I don't ever think to do the review. I just, you know, slip a check, get a bag. Life is good. <laughs> yeah. But reviews are a big deal. They so are a big if deal. If you did get a bag and you love it, which I have no doubt that you do, let her know. That's a great way to, to show some love there. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, and so. I'm going to work better to not just be a check sliver. <laughs> <laughs> to figure that out. But anyway, so what's been happening? It's been a few weeks since you've been here. Yeah, I've been I've been bag busy. Of course. For the, a, for, a good way to be. Yep, I've been coming up with um, new designs and just working on my dresses and things. I have a couple shops locally that I need to get stuff to and just different orders on Etsy and then... My younger kids are on spring break. Actually, my oldest was as well. So they've been around, which is great. Um, my 17-year-old, which is out in Utah for a ballet academy, she'll be coming home in a couple of months to be attending Joffrey um, Ballet Allie. Ballet Allie's Chicago. like all over the joint all the she's, time. I mean, she's traveled probably more than I have. I don't even know how you keep track of her. I like, know. Listening to you, I'm like, that's exhausting. I know. Lord love you. Yes. <laughs> so we've just, we've just been, we've been busy. What about you guys? We had our spring break as well, which you guys will hear about. We oh, yeah. went to Portland for the Rose City Yarn yes. Crawl, which you all know. Yes. It was ridiculously fun. And it's going to be a three part because I went, okay, I need to back up and make sure that everybody knows because Emily knows me well. I am a budgeter. It was mm -hmm. planned. I didn't just go crazy. Mm -hmm. So it might appear that I went crazy, but she it was went there all with the purpose budgeted and, yes. and planned. Yes. And if you're flying a half a country for a yarn crawl, you're going to buy yarn. You're I mean, going to stock your supplies. It's no joke. Yeah. So anyway, so you'll see that um, starting this week and then the next two weeks following. So that was our big thing. We're back. Kids are in school. I'm back to work. Yeah. We got we got our groove going. So you mentioned new bags. I did. Show us what you have. Okay. So I'm going to show you this one first. This is the same style as before. So it's spring. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to. Yeah. I don't know. There you go. You yep. see. Okay. So it's. It's definitely your lighted muted colors. It's a cream color with it's got gray and sage and blush and blue. And then it's got the matching blue here and kind of like ticking. What's Do you remember that? Okay, ticking is a material they used to make feather beds out of. Oh. That's what they would wrap. Let's, that's how there's a song that my dad used to sing around the campfire and it always says soft as the. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But that's what it looks like and I just love it. So this one has the pocket as well, just oh my like gosh. the other. Three colors, like we're getting fancy, I'm girl. Getting fancy, <laughs> and I wanted to when I um did it. I wanted the ticking to peek out a little bit there, so you can oh see. Oh my goodness, so your details. Thing, just like the other bag, it's got you know our little calm collection there on the side, um, and this one measures approximately nine nine and three quarter inches there, and ten and a half inches wide. So, and this one's thirty five. 
So I am going to be doing limited quantities on these ones. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll probably be doing around less than 10 for sure. Well, on all of yours, yes. they're limited. Yes. But the cool thing is about that, which I love because I'm working on some little brighter. We're trying to get them a yes, little brighter. We are. That one will probably be the last muted no, muted. No, muted's good. Don't Not, take it away forever. Yes. But it's nice to have some yes. bright varieties. Yes, yes. Um, so you're definitely going to be kind of getting fresh, different fabrics yes. in, and none of it's going to be... Your, but even in your dresses, you're not a whole, like a huge wholesale. You're very custom. Yes. You're very... It's boutique. You're very boutique. So if you see something you like... You better get it before. Don't it hesitate to grab away. it. Yeah. Because it might not be there. And yes. that's okay, because better, not better, exciting things are coming. Yes. There's always different things to look forward to. Yes. So that's what I've come to enjoy and appreciate about, about you in the dress world and now in the bag world. Well, I'm so excited. tell us about this like new design, Maverick. This one here is just a, like a little knot bag. So you've got it. This is the medium size, by the way. And I'm going to hold it up here so you can see the colors. I know, yellow, yellow and blue. The blue is making that. me smile. I know. And the inside is the yellow with the chevron. Oh, yeah. Um, I like the chevron for the outside, too. Well, Funny you should say that, because guess what? It's reversible. Oh, it's shit. Reversible. <laughs> so I put the little comb collection um, tag up here on the handle so it could can be reversible. So you just put the long handle to the little one, and you knitters can just knit carry away. It. Yeah, knit away. I so. am not a walking knitter, but a ton of people are. That's crazy to me. I can barely walk and chew gum. I wonder if someone would send a video. If you do get this bag and you walk yes. and knit video... <laughs> I'd love to see that. Because I don't know how you do it, but I want to know. Yeah. So this one's fun. Again, it's made out of just the duck canvas material. And this one's going to come in three sizes as well. This is the medium. The small will be approximately 13 and a half inches from the top of the handle to the bottom of the bag um, by nine and a half inches wide. This medium one is 17 and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. And the large is pretty big. I mean, it's pretty big. It's tw 20 and a half inches handle to bottom by 16 inches. So I'm, I'm I'm guessing that the small would be like hats or socks. Yeah. Um, there's some yarn, so you're going to see a little sneak peek because this yarn won't be shown until later. But just for fun, the medium, grab a couple skeins okay. and just pop it in. And let's just see. This is unwound. Okay, hang on. Let's see. So we've got three. I'm, I'm, I'm um, bending them a little bit because when they're wound, they're not that long. Right. I think it's probably about a three skein project. Oops, I went the wrong way. Yeah, I think a three skein project. And those are full big DK weight skeins. So that's a very nice size. Yeah. But it's just good to know for reference. Reference. Yeah. So that would be like a really great, well, there's tons of two skein cowls um, or shawls or three skein shawls. I mean, I like that's a normal size for that stuff. So I think that's perfect for that. Yeah. And it can even, you know, if you are, I know sh she brings lots of different projects everywhere she goes. She's I never do. just working on one, you know, so the little one could go in the bigger one or, yes. you know. Because I do that. I have my <clears> big, well, you guys have seen my big dachshund bag and now I've got my big yarn, um, Rosity yarn crawl bag. So I will put a couple of the small, these mm -hmm. bags, I have like two or three projects in there because... You never know what project you want to work on. That could change. And different projects at different points are easier. Right. And some, so sometimes I just work it till I get to a point that's maybe a big lacework section that I have to really think about and I can't chat about and knit. So then I put that away and I get an easier yes. one out. Yes. Um, and then we've got, so our girls are in volleyball. We talked about this. So yeah. we have one more big marathon. She'll have like tournament yeah, weekend. On Saturday. <sighs> True confession time. I'm not the best volleyball mom. <laughs> She's great at knitting during volleyball. Though. I do. <laughs> I get too stressed. I can't take it. So I have to just knit. So I'm focused on that. And every once in a while, I'll look up. Or Emily Lord Lover, which I'm hoping our girls are in similar courts again, because she'll yeah. be like, here comes Izzy. And then yes. I can put my knitting down and watch a little mm -hmm. bit because I get too stressed. I can't. I can't take it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's only my it's second fine. year of volleyball momming. I've got time. You've got time. All right. So, so tell me about some prices for okay. those bags. So for these ones, the smaller bag is... This is, again, the medium. The smaller bag is going to be 18. This medium one will be 20, and the large will be 25. So it's a little bit and lower large, of a price, price I think point. the large will be like, I think you can fit a sweater, sweater. in the large. It's, it's big. So $25 for a sweater bag is a deal. Yes. That's a really good deal. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit lower of a price point. And so for right now, I just have this fabric choice right. for it. Um, but... They'll be I'll be taking everything to the photographer and getting pictures up and it'll all be on Etsy. So when is so we are just peaking this release. These are not available yes. right now. Right. And a reminder, the other bag 
can you get the other drawstring bag out yes. again? So the drawstring bag, I think there are still uh, not very many. No, a few there's available. There's just a few left. Yes, still on um, Etsy. Etsy, the Calm Collection Etsy site. Mm -hmm. um, and how much are those? I don't remember. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay. Yes. So this version will be coming out along with the new style when? When does it drop? April 1st. Oh, no fooling. That's not a joke. <laughs> That's not a joke. April Fools. I love April it. April 1st, these two bags will be released. Awesome. Awesome. So, and I know, I know Emily will be teasing some of that yes. and having some other things that'll come up. Maybe she'll even have a new fabric to release the same day. You never know. Yeah. You never Keep know. Keep your eye on the gram. Woo woo. Yeah. Um, so that's really exciting. I'm very, very happy to see all the new things and to see your new style. So one of the big things that we have that we have to talk about is... This is what everybody's been waiting for. The giveaway. Yes. So it's our... With our succulent bag. Hooker's Corner and the awesome succulent bag from Calm Collections that we are giving away. Um, we did a random generator. We first did it because you had three opportunities. You had this podcast and the two Instagrams, Emily's and myself, to follow... Um, like and share. So you had, you know, a couple different ways to win. So we did not in um, random generator ended up being that the winner got drawn from Emily. So woo -woo. good job. Um, and then we just did another random generator and then went through and counted everything. Yes. So we worked on that. And um, so before I say who it is, I do want you to know that we did check to make sure that you followed because that's important. You know, yes. we're doing this because we want to get the word out about the awesome bags and the awesome things happening on Instagram and here. Um, so this person was a follower, so that was really great. And then we are only announcing it here. We're going to put like a little teaser for everyone today because we're recording this a day earlier so that they know to come and check the podcast. But this is the only place that's being announced. So when we announce the winner, um, please comment or contact me through YouTube. And if we don't hear from you... Um, it's, co it's coming out Wednesday the 20th. Let me see. I'm looking at my calendar. Sorry, guys. If we don't hear by the 26th, which is in six days, because the next podcast will be on the 27th, and we'll draw another winner. So I, I hate to be that harsh, but um, that's how we're going to run it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll keep drawing. We're going to give everybody six days to see if they're a winner. And if not, we're going to keep drawing until we find someone who is um, actively watching on Instagram and actively watching on podcasts. So, so make sure you contact Terry through her YouTube. Yeah, I mean, if you contact me through Instagram, that's fine yeah. too. But e either way, you're gonna. We're only it. announcing it here, yes. so you'll yes. you'll have to listen yes. to find it. <laughs> All right. So the winner is okay. So it's Marlene B. Is her name, and on Insta she's at M S M A R B I. And what I'll do, I will put like a little info graphic thing and I'll pop it in here so you can see it written out and then yeah so contact myself or Emily she can she can get a hold of me too whatever yes. either way congrats Woo -woo. <laughs> we're super excited and I cannot wait to see what you do with this yes. um yeah so that's what that's what we're doing now when so I am keeping Emily last time you were here I kept you a little longer too I'm keeping her a little bit longer into the work in progress section because I've got a big shawl that I need help with Yes. So she's going to stay for a little bit. But after that, when's the next time that you're going to be here? Well, I've been thinking I am coming up with even a newer design for bags. <laughs> Thank goodness for Terry. Uh -huh. um, and so I will be back here, I think, on the April 10th. Yep. April 10th. April 10th podcast to release that bag. And I possibly might be doing maybe some sort of giveaway with Mother's Day. So keep your eye on all of Ooh, that. Oh, I might get in on that too. Mm -hmm. We might work. Well, of course, we're going to work together. Again. Yeah. Of course. So she's kind of stuck with me. Yeah. It'll, it'll <laughs> be, and, and I'll hopefully have not just, it'll be one new style, but hopefully quite a few different fabric choices. Well, and also, I, I this might not happen, but I believe it's going to be, where's your other cool one? This one? I'm, I'm so asking her to name her bags. They're not named yet, but I'm working on it. Yeah. So this one. Drop comments if you'd like to help name them. Ooh. <laughs> do you have, that could be like, fun. I'm thinking like, well, yeah, you know, like a street name or like a, you know, there's certain bags that you're like, <clears throat> it's the, I don't know, like the Michael Kors bag. Yeah. You know, like there's certain, or the, it's the coach bag. Yes. Right. So we need, and, and they can't all be the calm bag. Right. Because there's going to be many different kinds different but anyway styles. like this one has different sizes i right. feel like from what we've talked about about what's coming up there might be some different sizes yes, i don't know there will be, be three but yes. maybe like one or two probably two different sizes yes. so that's pretty exciting yeah all right cool so that's so that. i'm super excited about that um again look for the new the new um spring release of different fabrics and the new bag coming april 1st yes okay so we're gonna jump into works in progress 
real quickly. So I have my sample knit, which I'm going to have Emily help me with. You can take that side. Okay. So um, this weekend, I, which I'll talk about in a little bit, I did Marie Green, um, who... Uh, well, we'll talk about. She wrote a book about sweaters, and I was knitting this while I was there during just downtimes in the class. And one of the gals was asking me, like, is this hard to put together? How does this work? So this is the Hohi Locatelli Fading Point Shawl, and it's done with, so when you see this fade, you're going to, I know you've seen it before, but it's gotten so much bigger, and you can really see the yarns now. It's with Northern Bee Studios yarn, Melissa's the Dyer. So I'm super excited about it. So wait till you see this, and then I'm gonna we're going to highlight the center portion of it because that's kind of what's tricky when you you, you knit um, two different I don't even know I am a math major oh, see my daughter would be making fun of me <laughs> parallelograms we're gonna go with that for now but I don't think that's what it is but anyway you knit two different sections and then you attach them in the center and then you have triangles to build out this rectangle so let's hold it up here's the fade I'll start at this end. You don't have to do this, Emily, but you can keep yourself. It okay. goes blue, and then there's a blue and purple, then this awesome green. But then here's the center, and I'm going to have you stand up a little bit okay. with me. Okay, so here's the center, and this is actually the center point. And this is what I started on just this morning. So you, you attach it. So this was the first one, and you can kind of see that um, flower chain over here, the lace work. And then there's one over here. They're mirrored. They're exactly the same. And then you attach it and you start stripe works, and then there's gonna be like an eyelet section next. And then this down here, um, these are the, the next triangle, they're just on a needle waiting for their turn. So once I get this top triangle down, I'll do the bottom triangle, and then this one is ready to be blocked. So it's so close, and the triangle work, like as you see, I've already got quite a bit done, and that was just from this morning. So the triangle work goes quick once you get to that point. So I'm so excited for this project it's to beautiful. be done. I know, I know. And isn't that, wasn't it soft it's yarn? super soft, yes. Yeah, it's from, yes. um, which I've talked about, Melissa. She's just a great dyer and her colors are, the face They're, pretty cool. Yes. So yeah, so thank you so much for helping me because I was like, how am I gonna get this up there? Because <laughs> it's kind of a delicate, that center point, it's not hard, but when it's new, there's not very many stitches. So it's a little delicate right. to try and hold up. Um, but when I show you the, the next time, I'm hoping in a week, it should be done. So I'll be able to show the finished project. I believe that it. it's no big deal to hold that because it's got the two triangles and it's not It's more stable. But I needed help, so it worked perfectly that you were yes. here. So thanks for staying a little bit longer. Yes, thanks for having me. All right, well, thank you so much. And um, Emily's going to sign off, so if you want to tell everybody bye. Thank you guys so much again for all your support and for watching. And hopefully Marlene contacts us. That's exciting. Yeah, I mean... Who wouldn't want a nice yeah. bag of yarn? Yeah. I'd be contacting right away. Yes. But again, um, so Marlene and everybody else, just so you know how it goes, you have until, and again, I'm folding or opening up my calendar, um, March 26th, because I we will redraw and I'll pop a new one in for the 27th if she hasn't contacted, but I'm sure she will, she so will. it's okay. She will. Um, but if not, I just want to make sure everybody knows how that's going to work because we want to get it into someone's hands. So that's how we're going to do it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Emily. We'll Thank see you, you soon. Hi, welcome back again. Thank you so much for joining me. Isn't it great having Emily on? I just love her. Um, okay, so on to my next work in progress. I only have the two. So I have the fading point, which we just saw. And then in my calm collections bag, I have, and Heather, the dyer of Panorama Yarn, um, so graciously helped me with the pronunciation. So I'm probably, I'm not gonna get it right still yet, but I think it's Shuan. X-U-A-N, Shuan. Um, I even went online and Googled how to say it. I'm trying, um, but it's a Chinese name, so that's cool. And it's an Amba O'Brien pattern, which I know you guys have seen it before, but it's so close to being done. I showed it on Instagram just the other day. Oh my gracious. Her gradient kit just shines in this pattern. Look at this. Isn't that the best? And now it's getting to this like nice red pink. It is so cool. And then I still have this little bit to go. So it's going to go a little pink and then hopefully we'll get into the purple before the pattern ends. So um, this is a mosaic pattern work. Um, yeah, with Amba O'Brien. She's awesome. And I'm right now starting this next. So I'm right here. I've got to start this. The, the mosaic pattern section will be next and then another color block section and then I'll be done. So it's really close to being done. It's absolutely stunning. This is one I very rarely, if ever, knit things over and over. Like some hat patterns I've done multiple times just with different yarns. Um, 
I don't think I've ever knit a pattern with the same yarn twice. This will be one I knit again because it's a sample knit, so it's going back to Heather, which I love. I know that she's going to display it, and so many people are going to love it and purchase yarn so they can make their own, but I'm making another one. That's how much I love this one. So that is my last work in progress. Getting, moving on. Oh, no, my, okay. So I wanted to talk about some exciting things that happened this past weekend. So I know I talked about, well, I had a lot of excitement. We did the Rose City Yarn Crawl, which there will be three installments of that trip, the yarn I brought back, the projects I'm intending to make with that yarn. Um, but then, and th those will be coming later, and they'll happen over the next three weeks. So these podcasts this week will be a little bit longer because I've got the Rose City Yarn Crawl recap happening. Um, but then this last Saturday, I was able, String Theory Yarn Shop in Glen Ellen, Illinois, had Marie Green come and um, do her kind of book tour for the Seamlessly Knit Sweaters in two weeks. And there were two classes, and I did them both. The first one was tips on um, neck and... Yeah, how to, like, when, when you pick up for a neck and the cardigan and when you pick up for, like, the side edge. So this is kind of, this is what we made. I'm not going to get too close with it other than to say um, it's the first time I've taken a class that you had to bring um, something to work on and we tried different techniques. So just, you know, the techniques and how to do it better is huge. I've been hedging on my, um, it's on my Make 9, my Comfort Fade Cardi. I've been hedging. I've had the yarn for over a year and a half, and I've been hedging, hedging. I can tell you now that puppy's going to jump up on the list, and I believe fully will get done this year because of these tips and techniques. I just feel like I can do it justice now, which makes me happy. And then I did pick out, because of course you cannot go to a sweater class. Oh, so uh, before I get there, I, well, I picked out a sweater that I'm going to be knitting, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'm going to show you the sweater and um, the yarn I got for it. But then the second part, her, her like second class, was breaking down how do you take a project like a sweater and break it down into daily increments so that you can get it done in the time frame allotted. Loved that. My little math brain was so happy and excited. I'm all charged up. I will say the, I've only knit, so I've got my one sweater that I knit was fingering weight and then the Sunset Highway was a fingering weight, color work fingering weight, which you all know I've got some, it's happening, I'm finishing it before I cast on one of these. But then I've got like, I don't know, probably four or five purchased that are worsted or um, DK weight. So those are going to fly. And I'm so pumped to time myself and try it because I know, I know I can get it done with what she went over. So anyway, the Cape Creep Minimalist Pullover. So it's this one. Let's see if I can get, yep, this is the one I'm going to be making. Um, she had all 20 sweaters there for you to touch and feel and try on. Um, I went with this one because I'm kind of a little bit, I've learned that I like patterns better when I use the same, not necessarily the same brand, but if it calls for 100% superwash, I want to find a yarn that's 100% superwash. If it calls for whatever, you know, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, and superwash, then that's what I want to use because that gets me the drape and the look that matches the most similarly to what the designer intended. I know there are other people that are awesome at substituting. I'm just not that way. And for sweaters, my theory is if I am spending that much time and that much energy and effort and money, I want it to look the best that it can look and the most representative of what I intended it to look or what the designer intended it to look. So that's my theory. So this was the one that was with um, Malabrigo and string theory carries that so that was just a perfect choice for me so this is the one i went with this great blue that's going to be my new sweater and because of my whole running out of yarn thank you sorry because of my whole running out of yarn from previous um i bought an extra skein just so i have stuff to um swatch with i know i'm good so yeah so that's for that project i don't know when i'll do it. I might do some others using the time frame that we learned in that class and some of the techniques I learned in that class before I knit this one from this book, but I loved all of the 20 sweaters after seeing them in person. And yeah, I, I, I do believe I'll be knitting a lot of them, if not all of them, before my before I'm done with that book. It was just awesome. So if you ever get a chance, um, she 
It's Marine Green is the name, her name. Um, she's at Olive Knits on Instagram. If you ever get the chance to take a class, just do it. Don't even think about it. It was awesome. I would go do it again. Um, I know she has other classes, so I'm, I know she said she'd come back to Strength Theory. I'm really hoping that they include some of the other classes because I would, I, it sounded like she did one on gauge to make sure your sweater fits you correctly. I'd be all on that because my row gauge wasn't right before and I didn't even know that that was an issue, but it was. That's why I burned so much ro yarn in my Sunset Highway. So I'm gonna do more research and think about that a little bit more. So the last thing I have to share with you before the next segment of the Rose City Yarn Crawl. So my awesome, awesome fiber share partner, Allison, Allie, sent me my package. It's been waiting. I wanted to open it up with you guys and show you what she sent. She, we also decided, I don't know if you remember, but we are doing um, a knit along. And I talked with her, Instagrammed with her today, and she said that we could totally share and open it up to everybody. So we are gonna do a spring knit along, Allie and I are. We're doing the Marina um, by Amba O'Brien. It's a two skein project. If you wanted an Amba pattern, cool. If you just wanna use bright spring colors, cause I'm gonna show you my colors. They both, and not that I didn't have a plenty of yarn here. Allie and I were texting different options like for the last three or four weeks. You know, we've been texting like, what do you think about this option with yarn? What do you think about this option? Um, and I finally went with, of course, two yarns from the Rose City Yarn Crawl, which I had to have Sarah from Marie, um, Marie Wool Goods and Company, she had to dye me another one because that green that she had, like, I'm using it all up. I now have like two other projects I need it for and it's gonna be all gone. So she's gonna dye me some more, but I'll show you that here at the end. So after I open up this awesome package, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the knit along and we'll see, depending on how many people join with us, I don't know, maybe I'll do a giveaway for a skin yarn, we'll see, I don't know. It depends how many people wanna join. It's going to be March 20th, which is the first day of spring, Tomorrow, when this releases, March 20th through June 20th. So it'll be three months long, the whole time of spring. Uh, you can do an Amba pattern with us, which would be awesome. You can do the same pattern with us, which would be awesome. Or you can just do bright spring colors because we, she's from Illinois and I'm from Iowa and we're both needing spring to come because it snowed here like yesterday. <laughs> but anyway, so here's the box. Um, I don't know if you can see this. This is Dare to Fiber Share. On this one, which I've got to show you this, alpaca this yarn and send it to you, team knit. And she drew a little alpaca. How freaking adorable is she? So this is Allie that sent it. I've not seen it. I'm opening it here, as I said, with you guys for the first time. I do have her permission to open up in front of everybody because that might make some people nervous. Um, but Allie was like, no worries, go ahead. Again, I might cut that out. So if you see me cut out... I just opened it back. So here it is. Here's the inside. I'm gonna set it down here and I'll open it up. Okay, I'm gonna take all the pieces out. She put little tags on them. Oh my goodness, I'll read some of these. She's crazy. Like, I think she's my yarn fairy. But in my defense, I've had amazing, amazing people in all of my swaps. And I try and be a very amazing swapper too. Oh my goodness, Allie. Holy smokes, girl. Holy smokes, it's like the box that just kept on going. Okay. Oh, some of the tags came off. I think she has them numbered. I might have the numbers mixed up, but it'll still be great. So there's a card from Chicago. Gosh, she's awesome. Okay, so Allie is adorable and she just wrote a really sweet message. She was saying these are her favorite dyers. Some of this she made herself. I can't wait. I'm gonna try and see if I can find, I think some of the numbers came off, um, which is totally fine. I'm just gonna try and see if I can find number one, maybe number one's over. Nope, there is a number one. Here it is, number one. Knit me. It says, because everyone needs some 100% non-superwash wool. We talked about this. I don't have very much non-superwash wool in my life. Um, oh, look at her. Wisconsin Wool and Spun. Small batch. 
Wow, 450 yards, 100 grams. How cool is that? Oh, Allie. Wow, it's this great blue color. Two skeins of that. How cool. So from what I'm understanding, this is like awesome for sweaters, mittens, hats. So I can't wait. I got super wash from another one from a Norway. It was from uh, my friend from Norway sent me some non super wash as well. So maybe I'll even mix it up for some color work stuff. That is awesome. And I've never heard of Wisconsin Wool and Spun, Barrett Wool Company. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I'm spoiled already. Okay, I might just dig in. I think I'm just going to dig into the numbers. So I hope that it's not too crucial. So here's the next one. Let's see what we have. Oh my gracious. Oh, raspberry biscuit cookies. Ooh, and bueno. Um, more chocolate snacks. We talked about it. We're both chocolate girls. When you knit, you need to have some good snacks. So that's amazing. I've not tried either of those. So that'll be wonderful. And look at how cute she, Allie, she was like, I didn't get it packaged that cute. Um, it's adorable. It's all these cute little like hummingbirds and bird tissue paper. You're blowing my mind. A yarn fairy, verifiable yarn fairy. Okay, let's see what this is because everyone could use a little DK. Oh, the Blackberry Ridge, crafted on a ridge in Missouri Ozarks. I've never heard of this before. The Blackberry Ridge Winter's Rose, 100% Super Merino DK. Oh, look at that color. Ooh, that's really great. Oh my. Oh my gosh, Allie. I've never even heard of this dyer. You made my day. Oh, sweet. I'm guessing maybe a hat, but I don't know. We'll have to see what that will become. Okay, number four, Drink Me. From a shop that is local to me, hope you really enjoy this one. I don't know the numbers came off. I'm gonna try this one. Let's see. Ready? Nope, that wasn't number four. That's okay though. This is, let's see if this has a different one. Knit me, two knit me's. The dyer hasn't been dying for a whole year yet, but her colorways are absolutely beautiful. Or, I was most excited for you to open this one. I hope it brings back all the beautiful memories you experienced at this place. The dyer is also local to Champagne. Okay, so I'm not sure if that's this one. Playful Day Yarns. Oh, this was in California. Super Mellow. Um, Super Melon is the name of the colorway. It's gorgeous twisted sock oh my gosh Allie that's so pretty wow you went crazy I'm I'm a little overwhelmed right now this is wow Allie okay I'm gonna keep opening but wow oh my gosh okay let's see what this one is Oh, this is the tea. Okay, 4th of July tea. Fireworks of fruit explode in a barrage of green teas with papaya, pineapple, strawberry, and rose petals. Hello, Winterfest. Enjoy the festive seasons with this merry blend. Oh my goodness. Tart apples, tangy orange peels, sweet almond pieces, cinnamon bits. This is like right up my alley. Oh my goodness. Share the world of tea. Tea Lula. Love it from Park Ridge, Illinois. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to try these. That's amazing. All right. Oh, this was book. This was number two. I was supposed to read that already. already. From one book lover to another. Okay. A stash of one's own. Knitters on loving living and letting go of yarn. Oh, oh, that's perfect. Oh, Allie, I've not read or heard of this before, so this made my whole day. I don't know about the letting go of one's yarn, though. Hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's perfect. Okay, let's open this one. Oh, no, let's open this one. So this is number five. I included this dyer because I was it was inevitable. However, I had no idea what this yarn looked like when I bought it. It was a Girl More Girls Mystery Club and inspired by Luke and Lorelai's first kit on the porch. I love Gilmore Girls, and I have never done any type of mystery clubs ever. 
for the Gilmore Girls. So this is making, oh my gosh, Allie, a Woolberry one. Oh, will you just stand still is the name of the colorway. Oh my gosh. Look at that. All the awesome browns. I can't even. Allie, <laughs> you're amazing. You went way overboard. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me see. This is the next one. Oh, shoot, there was a one on this one. Three little things. Oh. Oh my gosh. Look at that. A cute little notions bag. How adorable. It looks like it's from Knitting Nelly. Oh my goodness. Oh, I bet you this is Knit One. One of the pins, the enamel pins from Knit One, I'm almost positive. Oops, sorry, you can't see that very well. And then, oh, oh long dog yarn. <laughs> a long dog yarn enamel pin. Oh my goodness. And a cute little progress keeper. It might be very hard to see. It's a little succulent progress keeper, which goes perfect with my succulent bag. I am so overwhelmed and blessed my gosh Allie okay this is the last one which I mean there's been five billion so wow okay let's see what we have okay explore knits and fiber I don't know this dyer either Rocky Mountain National Park oh we talked about some of our favorite places to travel. I worked there, uh, oh gosh, over a summer. Allie, oh my gosh, look at the sock set. I'm not getting, I don't know if the label will come over, but look at these colors. Oh, Allie is an avid sock knitter. I have knit one pair, but I'm trying to knit more. That's my goal. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> overwhelmed with your thoughtfulness and your kindness. Oh my gosh, Allie. Oh my gosh. She, yeah, thank you. She's amazing. I will insta you later, Allie, but oh my gosh. Thank you. On that note, we're doing this fantastic knit along together. As I mentioned, here, so, uh, here are my yarns um, that I'm using for our knit along that we're doing, Allie and I are doing, which we want you all to be a part of with us. It is the spring knit along. Um, depending on how, people, how many people join along, I, I might give some yarn away. We'll have to see. Um, Allie and I are doing the Marina, an Amba O'Brien pattern, and I'm using Long Dog Yarn. Yarn. Um, it just reminded me of fresh lilacs. And again, I'm so ready for spring. So this was perfect. And then I'm pairing it with the Murray um, and Company, Murray Wool, Go Wool Goods and Company Green. Man, I don't know why that's not... The sun's apparently really crazy today. But anyway, that's my colors. So look for that. Um, it's going to start on the day this releases. So tomorrow I'm casting on. And so is Allie. And then it's going to run through June, all of spring. So through June 20th, um, there's going to be a hashtag. So I think it's going to be hashtag EG for early girls. Spring K-A-L, spring knit along. So I'd love to see on Instagram. I'm going to follow that hashtag. So if you do choose to jump in, you can do an Amba Pot. Um, Amba O'Brien pattern with us. You can do just spring colors of anything you want to knit with us. I'm just happy for spring to come and any inspiration that you get, I am on board and would love um, to see that with you guys. So thank you so much. Um, it's now going to roll into the Rose City Yarn Crawl part one of that recap. Thanks everybody. Hi, it's Terry with Early Girls Yarn back again. Back from the Rose City Yarn Crawl, which was amazing. Um, boy, they know how to pack a punch in four days. I have never been to the Pacific Northwest before, neither had my girls. So it was so much fun. The amount, and, and as we've talked about, I love yarn crawls. I've done quite a few in different parts of the nation. Um, these guys do it really well. They have so many dyers that are local to their area. Um, some new designers I had never heard about that I think is one of the best things for me about visiting different yarn shops when we travel 
is you, every shop has a different flair. Every region has a different flair. And it is just so inspiring to go. Um, so let me take you, and this is going to be a three part, I think three, maybe four part um, dive into the yarn crawl and what I got and the different shops. I took video at almost every shop. I think I missed one shop and I bought something, <laughs> me or the girls, neither of us, some of us bought something at almost every shop. I think one shop we didn't, one shop we went to four times. Nuts. Um, but it was just so much fun. So this is going to be taking you through day one. So we landed our plane and we're from central time. So then we lost two or I don't know, gained two hours, whatever. It was two hour time difference to Pacific time. So we landed at like 11 a.m. We got our luggage, got our rental car, packed the girls up. And it wasn't even a, do you want lunch? It was, we're going to our first yarn shop. Girls, get in. Um, we went to, we started with Blizzard Yarn Studio. Um, first one, so exciting. I'll pop a picture of us right outside the door of our first yarn shop on our first um, Row City Yarn Crawl. It was amazing. So the first thing we got when we walked in was the things that I had pre-ordered. So let's see. Yes, so I got the really cool, and I'm not even a huge enamel pin collector. Oh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Um, there we go. This was their enamel pin for the year. It matched the bag. Now this bag is um, with the completed pins from each shop. So I also got the canvas commemorative tote. Um, it just says Rose City Yarn Crawl 2019. And there was each flower has a pin from each yarn shop. I might be able to get a closer look. And then there's, of course, the finisher pin up here. So it was so much fun to go to each yarn shop. Now, this was back in December, I think, they put all of their Rose City Yarn Carl items up. And they had, I'm looking to see if I can, there it is. Um, they had a Rebecca Perry um, printed with water-based inks on natural and sustainable fabrics from Handmade in Portland, Oregon. They had a huge, amazing tote that you could purchase. And I'm like, we're dry. We're from half a country away. We're going all in. I'm getting all the things because I need to. This bag is bigger than the bag that I brought um, with me on the plane with all my stuff, which worked great because you can only have so many bags. So I put my dachshund bag inside this one for the flight back home. So I absolutely love it. Um, it's 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 well made, great investment. It was not an inexpensive bag, but I'm grateful that I got one. Um, and I loved walking around. It carried all of my um, skeins in it. I'm gonna take it this weekend um, when I do the Marie Green. I'm gonna take it this weekend to do that. So I got all those things at the first yarn shop. So grateful that that was there. Then um, they had, my girls of course, each wanted skeins from the first yarn shop. So we, they found this in the deep hue sea. Um, and it's an indie dyer and I'm not sure where they're out of. It didn't say, I'll have to look, but anyway. So this one is gonna be CC's. She wanted a hat. And don't these just look like awesome, bright, fun, CC colors. So at some point for next year, that'll become a hat. Then Izzy picked out this just really fun and funky skein. She's going to make an animal out of it. I don't know which one yet. I'm thinking it was the cat, but I'll have her come on and tell us about that. And then I found, or didn't find, there was um, a dyer there that was doing, let's see, I'm going to put these in this. I'll put them over here. There was a dyer, Alexander, Alexandria, the art of yarn. And she was there. I think she was there all four days. I mean, I've, I of course saw her on Thursday. Um, and these were her yarn that she dyed. These were Rose City Yarn Crawl exclusive 
yarns. Let's see if I can get it to focus on the colors. There we go. Um, so these were her show colors. So really excited. And then as I was walking around, ah, let's see if I can get it to focus. As I was walking around, maybe you can see it better from back here. Um, I found, and I'm gonna pop this picture up, um, I'm going to make from this because I didn't have a plan for these, so I almost didn't buy them. But then Blizzard had a shawl that was done, and I'm like, that's so pretty. And it was a two-skein shawl, so I thought that was great. And it was called I Stole a Seaside Cottage, which little did I know when we were going to go visit the sea, we fell in love with Cannon Beach and thought it was amazing. That was um, on our third day we did that. Uh, maybe I'll pop, pop some pictures of the girls. In the Here we are at Cannon Beach. Of course, knitwear everywhere. I did not realize how much we needed this, how much we needed the ocean. It's pretty amazing. So there you go. I'll turn back around so you can see it. It's awesome. The girls are loving it. We're so happy we drove down here today. There they are. Huge waves. They're surfing stuff all over and you can't figure it out because it's cold. And it's cold and Izzy's in her winter coat. Shell hunting. She's bound and determined to get shark teeth. I don't know if sharks really come up this far, but boy, she's determined. This is amazing. It's like an hour and a half from Portland, so we've been enjoying the city, and we just decided after one of our yarn stores to come out and wow, did not disappoint here at Cannon Beach. So fun. So relaxing just to hear the beach was awesome. And I thought about this. Um, she is Knitwork Design Studio is who did that pattern. She's a newer designer. It just got published back in September and I think she's only published only. I mean, this is a lot. I think when I read about it today, it was eight. She's got eight designs and she just started in December. Um, and she's from Vancouver, Washington, which is where Blizzard is. So I thought how cool to have a designer who's really kind of just starting her career. Um, and then it became even more impactful after our seaside adventure to Cannon Beach. And I'm like, yeah, no, I could have a cottage there. We could have stayed three or four days there. The girls just loved it. And it wasn't even warm, but just to be on the beach, to hear the wave, the sound of the waves crashing, finding seashells, just finding treasures. It was perfect. It was, it was what we needed. It was really great. Um, so anyway, so that's the yarn for that. So I'm really excited and I'm not positive because you'll see I've got quite a few yarn projects that I purchased for. So I'm not positive, but I think this might be my first cast on just because, yeah, a local Portland dyer and a local designer project. I mean, I think that is pretty perfect. Not positive, but that's what I'm thinking right now anyway. So we had fun, we went there, and then um, Alexandria is the dyer, the name of the dyer. She was so kind because I didn't realize how hungry we really were, how short my tone was, sadly, until we we're getting ready to go and I'm like, okay, are there any food restaurants? And I'm thinking, you know, I've got an eight and a 12 year old, I'm thinking kid food, something kind of quick because we got more stores to see and everything. And bless her heart, she's like, there's this awesome Russian um deli and and me tired not realizing i was tired i'm like i'm not going to a russian deli with kids they're gonna be horrible at a russian deli they don't, we don't eat russian food I, I, so bless her heart she handled it well i was not at my best um so i do feel bad so i apologize if you're watching that was bad of me i know it wasn't mean but i was kind of short with that no um but anyway we ended up going we had read about um, Cece, my youngest, loves pizza, and we read about Hot Lips Pizza. It was this really fun thing to do in Oregon. So as we're driving to our next store, which was Close Knit, um, she spied a Hot Lips Pizza, and she's like, Mom, stop the car. Hot Lips is right there. So it worked out great. We had our first Hot Lips. Um, it was it was good. It was It's like a wood fire pizza, um, and they had some made, and they just heated them up for you thin crust. It, it was just what we needed. It was perfect. And we were glad to hit that and find that on our way to Close Knit. So Close Knit and, and I did. Yeah. Okay. 
and colors are everywhere, like in life. Um, I only grabbed one skein there. There were quite a few people there. Um, it's a sm it was a smaller shop. It's a smaller downtown shop. We were able to find parking, which parking from a non-Portlandier or someone who's not used to your area, parking was kind of a challenge at, at a few of the shops. Um, so this one, we were lucky. We found some parking relatively quickly. I picked up this skein, um, and I will show this again on, on a, my next video because I forgot to grab it. I picked this up, and it was just one I've never. It's from Hugh Loco, which I've seen her... Um, videos. She's from Col Colorado. I've never had any of her yarn before. So I'm pretty excited about this. It's just, I bought it to go with one of the yarns that I have in mind from Hooker's Corner. So this specific green is what I, I just happened to be what I was looking for. I'm like, that's going to go perfect with my Hooker's Corner yarn. And I'm going to find a shawl, a two color shawl to go with that. I have a few in mind. So that's all I grabbed from there. Um, I will pop a picture in and the name of the designer. There was a local designer there that was showing some of her um, designs and there was a hat out of worsted weight that I thought looked really cool. It could be a scrappy hat. Um, and I apologize, I did not write that down, but I'll post that and I'll make sure I'll have her name tagged. I'll like put that in this video um, because I'm sure at some point I'll be making that hat. It was real um, geometric, which I loved. There was just, you know, day one of Yarn Crawl, tons of people, smaller shop. Um, I really enjoyed their shop. They had a lot of cool bags. I almost bought a bag, but I'm like, nah, not quite yet. Not on day one. I don't know what else is out there. Um, but I got that skein and I'm happy to do that and was happy to include that. The next yarn shop we went to was Twisted. So Twisted, in my opinion, the Twisted Yarn Shop had the best um, kit, yarn kit, I, I, I would say, which, you know, you hate to categorize, but I would say the best value um, for what you got. I, I was really impressed with them. They're, they are one of the shops that I would absolutely go back to. I wished that I had more time to spend there. There was just so much to see. We are now at Twisted. Oh, oh I'm sorry. You're fine. There's your yarn call. Well, I like we don't have a lot of knitted wear. I think she's a local dyer. Okay. And then I got the Blue Moon. I'm going to try those guys out. I've not had that before. And look at all their samples up on top. Super fun. My mugs. Really nice Maybe they had trunk shows and I didn't know. I seemed to really gravitate um, to, to trunk shows. Some um, Naughty Lamb is one of the ones that had like a different trunk show each day. And we ended up going there three days and then again after the yarn crawl, a fourth day. Um, and for whatever reason, that seemed I seemed to really gravitate towards that. Um, I hit different trunk shows at a, at a couple of the different places on Saturday, which we'll talk about in the next the next one. But these guys at Twisted, when I go to Portland again, because we were going to go again, I don't know when, it might be a few years from now, we'll make sure we go in the summer because we want to do, um, we hiked the waterfalls, but there was still ice up at the waterfalls, which really freaked my youngest out. She was like, not doing it. So Izzy and I want to go and explore. There's tons of hiking trails. We want to go and explore all of that when it's warmer when there's no ice so we're thinking we'll go like i don't know june july august and that time frame i'll do more research because i know they're noted they're known for all their flowers and some of the flowers were just starting to bloom but we want to go I, I know they've got these spectacular rose gardens we want to go when it's that season and then we'll come back and then it won't be the yarn crawls so it won't be as chaotic and then i can spend more time in some of these shops and twisted is one of them that i would do spend more time in for sure so their yarn crawl pattern was called The Moon and Other Satellites by Larissa Brown. Let's see if I can, I don't know if it's gonna have too much glare. This is that shawl, and I'll put a picture up too, I think, because I think the glare's a lot. It came in this really great um, plastic container, which had the four skeins. I'll see if, again, that glare, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, the four skeins, and then it came with a metal enamel pin. I actually am probably just going to open it up for you because the yarn's that great. It is from 
So here's the pin. Um, it's like a little moon pin. It's a yarn ball moon, crescent moon, which is perfect and goes with their theme. And then it's from Blue Moon Fiber Arts, um, which from, I, I did not research. I believe that they are a local dyer as well. I'm not seeing that on here. I'll have to look at that, but I believe that they were a local dyer. Um, but look at these colors, which I'm just in love with. They had different different kits with different colorways. I went with this blue, um, purple and blue. I just thought this colorway was great. Some blues, purples, grays. It was just really a fun one. So I'm pretty excited about this kit. I'm excited about knitting that up. And it had a printed pattern, a printed colored pattern. All of that for $100. I just thought that was fantastic. Really well prepared, really well packaged. Um, the yarn's gorgeous. Printed pattern, color printed pattern, and the enamel pin, which I'm not the biggest enamel pin collector, but I'm like, it, it just, it went perfect with everything. I'm like, it matched my kit. It was a little moon yarn ball. I mean, I, I couldn't be, that's probably, as I said, one of my most um, I just thought this was perfect. So way to go, Twisted. You really nailed the pattern. You nailed um, the options with the box. I mean, the printed pattern and the pin, top notch. So I was really pleased with that find. Um, it was probably, as I said, one of my most, I was most excited about that shop pattern and package and how they did all of that. I just thought it was top notch. So that is one that I would really like to go and spend more time with. That's on my list to do. I don't know how you, if you guys do that when you travel, but when I do my yarn crawls, sometimes we're only, I only get to each store once. This time it was different. We had a whole week because it was so far away. Um, but even with the whole week, I had the girls with me and I burnt them out a little bit. By the end, they were, they were done. <laughs> they were done, done with the yarn stores. Um, but I, I'm making notes for the next time when we go, that is definitely one I'll go and spend more time in. So the next was Pearl Arts um, Fiber, or Pearl Fiber Arts, excuse me. They were a downtown, oh well. They were a downtown store as well. Um, and I will pop a picture of their yarn crawl, which I loved. This poncho, it's in worsted weight. Um, awesome gradient, which Izzy picked out these colors. And then it's with this, um, I would call it a semi-solid, like a gray tonal kind of semi-solid um, but I'll pop a picture of the project that goes with this. I'm working with some other gradient yarns. I was knitting that on this trip. Um, and so of course that spoke to my little heart and I'm like done and done. And this was all, so this was Fierce Fibers. She is from Portland as well, um, or Manning, Manning, Oregon. And she, hers was 80% Merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, which I just love, love, love. Anything with a little cashmere. That's for me. So that is a cool worsted weight poncho. Um, the one that I'll, the picture I'll pop, it was um, a rainbow one, which was equally cool, but Izzy's like, no mom, you need this. So I was pretty jazzed with the color she picked out. I think that's gonna look pretty amazing. Um, so that was our fourth. And then we were on to our fifth and our final stop for the day. And that was Fiber Rhythm Craft and Design. So by this point, that was, that was kind of downtown um, Portland as well, or my version. Like, it was all in that same area. Um, we, had, had, we were up at 4 in the morning central time. So we had a long day. <laughs> you know, this is, I think, 5 or 6 o'clock at night. The girls were hanging in with me but getting a little tired. Fiber Arts, or Fiber Rhythm was pretty cool. Um, I picked up, so I, I guess I wasn't in the most shoppy of moods simply because we're all getting tired and they were getting a little owly and there's a lot of like little shops within this shop I guess is their little it seemed you know they had so what I anyway let me go in it's the one I didn't get a video of which I'm sorry but it was the end of the day but they had tea which I picked up some tea I picked up a couple mystery bags from plum deluxe tea fresh organic and fair trade so a chocolate cinnamon tea which I'm excited to try I picked up, well, and these were just a mystery ones, so I just grabbed them, so I didn't know what I had until I got home, really. A peach bellini herbal tea, which how great does that sound? A coconut macaroon dessert tea. Um, a snow-covered blueberry white tea. I'm excited about that. Now, these two, I'm not sure about. Meadow walk herbal tea, so I'm not sure about that one. Um, 
I don't know. You can't really smell them. I'm not sure about that one. And the breakfast in bed black tea. Which I might try it. I don't know. Black, terry, black tea, blueberry, and hazelnut essence. Maybe. Maybe that'll be really great. I don't know. Um, but I'm probably going to be giving... Oh, this one is lav lavender, rosemary, blueberries, raspberry leaves, rose hips. It actually sounds like it would be so sweet too. So I'll probably try them all. I don't know. Or I might give some to my wool swap partner if they like tea. I'm not sure. So I'm excited about that. Um, Plum Deluxe also has apparently a monthly thing that they can send. I want to try this before I join that, but that seems really awesome too. And then I got these cute little flamingo scissors, which are going to be really hard to see, but they're super small and super cute. So I'm going to pop that. That's going to be in part of my travel bag. I also got, oh, Izzy found, I, we were almost gone, uh, walking out and almost didn't get any fiber things. I just... I was tired and I was wore out. I just, I don't know. But then Izzy loves to crochet animals like we talked about. So she got two. One is a unicorn, which she's already started. So I don't have that here. And then she got the, um, we're gonna call it border collie. Let's see. So it's the kit to make the crochet animal, the border collie crochet animal from Toft. They had a bunch of them there. And Izzy thought that was just pretty spectacular. And we, my dad has border collies and we had one of his border collies at our house for a while. So we love them, they're really great. So that was our, oh, I forgot this. So this tool, it's called the Easy Peasy Gauge Ruler and it's to help you, it magnifies gauge when you're knitting gauge. I'm not gonna hold it up because you won't see it with the, with the shine or the shimmer from the light. Um, but that was pretty cool. Apparently it's a new knitting tool that's coming out um, and I got that from Blizzard with Alexandria. She had that and had a little sample of that. I'm going to use it when I knit my, um, gauge swatch for the Rosalie T that I'm doing, um, the knit along that I'm doing. So yeah, so that's going to be my first time using it. I'll probably take a picture and post that or do a little video about that because it looked really great. I'm hoping it works as well as, um, it looked for her. As, as she demonstrated it. I'm sure it will. So that was our first day. I mean, what a whirlwind. Hello, Portland. I mean, it was fantastic, but it was a lot. It was a lot. So we went back to the pool and the girls swam. We went back to the hotel and the girls swam because that's they just need to get some energy out. So they swam quite a bit that first night. And then we just vegged and got ready for our next big day. So... As I said, I'm going to do this video in three parts because I ended up with quite a lot, way too much for one video. Um, and yeah, so you're going to see that over the next three episodes, which I think I'm going to still do weekly, at least for a while. I've got um, some projects that I'm sample knitting, so I'm going to be able to show some really good progress on projects. I will say thanks to the podcast and knowing I needed to tape this. I don't know about you. We, when we get back from a trip, I know there are some people that are rock stars and like unpack bags and get laundry going right away and they're amazing and typically when I get home I'm like I'm behind in work and I've got 10 people I need to call back and I've got to get all that going. I brought my work computer with me on this trip and because it was you know they were two hours difference I actually was able to work most mornings because by 10 a.m. when the stores would open that's noon central time so I was able to actually you know I was up at like 4 a.m which is six, yeah, like between four and 5 a.m. Pacific time, I was up and working because I could get a whole ton done and then just need to be on emails the rest of the, the evenings. So that worked great for me. Um, yeah, actually that worked really great. So I was not as behind in work as I normally was. And then I knew I had this podcast and I wanted to get cracking and get everything organized because I, 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 yarn wise, I'm usually pretty good about unpacking because I'm so excited and I get all it all organized into projects and then I put it away in the cubbies with other like projects so I know where to find it. Um, but I knew I wanted to share it all with you. So I'm like, I need to get going. So I will say the next within one day, actually the night we got home and we got home at like seven o'clock at night, central time. It was pretty much all the yarn bags, the three, the three, three yarn slash book carry on bags were completely unpacked. I was organized and ready for this. Um, yeah, everything. And then the rest of the bags were totally done by the next morning. Laundry's already done. And we're now a day and a half back. 
as I'm recording this. So crazy, crazy, but awesome. And probably due to knowing I needed to do the podcast and needed to stay organized. So yeah, so grateful for that. So anyway, thank you so much for seeing step one, phase one of the Rose City Yarn Crawl recap. It was amazing. Loved all the shops we saw. Um, most I would see again, but for sure Twisted is one that I just wished I had spent more time with. Um, the others, I feel like we did walk around. Uh, that was the one where I think we were very, I was very targeted about the kit. The kit was awesome. So I kind of grabbed and went. Um, so that was one I definitely would want to spend more time in, but yeah, they were all amazing. Um, you're going to see video, hopefully I'll have the video clips in of each one, the ones that I took them of. But yeah, it was just amazing. The people were amazing. The local dyers were amazing. Highly, highly recommend. So again, I am Terry with Early Girls Yarn. You can find me at Early Girls Yarn. The, no, wait, let's see. Let me think about this. I think it's, yeah, Early Girls Yarn on Instagram. And you can find me um, at The Early Birds on Ravelry. And then The Early Girls Podcast is where we're at. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you next week.